Hello everyone, in this part of the Neurodynamics series, we are going to learn the practical skills that are required to perform the obturator nerve mobility testing. Now obturator nerve is one nerve that is not so frequently involved, but sometimes patients who complain of the groin pain and pain in the adductor side of the thigh can have the problems with this particular nerve. The test that is going to be demonstrated in this video helps the therapist to determine the mechanical functions and mechanosensitivity of the obturator nerve. To perform the test, the therapist makes the patient assume the high sitting position but in such a manner so that the patient is sitting at the edge of the couch with thighs on opposite ends. So that means that the patient is going to be in this position. Now from here, the therapist is going to be on the side that needs to be tested. And now the therapist is going to instruct the patient to perform the slump maneuver as was used for the slump testing. Now the near hand of the therapist forearm is going to be placed over the C71 junction and is going to apply over pressure to this thoracolumbar flexion movement. The cervical spine is next going to be taken into the available range of flexion and it is going to be held by the near hand of the therapist. Now while maintaining the slump over pressure, the therapist is next going to grab the thigh from the distal side of the middle portion of the knee joint and is going to take this into the available range of hip abduction while monitoring the patient's symptoms. The test is considered to be positive if this maneuver increases or reproduces the patient's symptoms. Once the patient's response is reproduced, just release the cervical flexion movement and if releasing the cervical flexion movement alters the patient's response, then it is considered positive for the involvement of the neural tissue. So with this, we have covered a majority of the neurodynamic series, especially how to assess the neural involvements, the interface involvements as well as the innervated tissue involvement. We also covered the behavior of the nervous system as well as the neurobiomechanics. In our remaining part of this series, we will be focusing upon the practical skills that are required to treat variety of conditions based on the neurodynamics principle. So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.